I knew it was only a matter of time before people ran to defend the Rings of Power, despite the very apparent failure of the season, especially the finale. If you read some of the reviews on Amazon's page for the show, even people who claimed they loved the show thought the finale was terrible. She-Hulk got a similar response, so I wasn't surprised to see people guzzling copium trying to get around the truth. You've got some YouTubers making videos professing their love for the show, you've got the usual suspects on social media claiming these are the best shows ever, and now you've got opinion pieces tripping over themselves to suckle at the teeth of defeat. Enter a one Mark Burroughs, a descendant of one of the murderous munchkins, I presume. He wrote this article on the New Statesman titled, Shows like the Rings of Power and She-Hulk have been runaway successes. Why can't keyboard warriors admit it? It's gonna be one of those articles, is it? All right, show me what you got, Mark. Quote, the great doom was foreseen from the first moment the trailers hit, the first images were released, and the casting was announced. It will be a disaster. This will end the studio. Fans have had enough. Which show? Basically all of them. Would you like some matches for your straw man? If the critics' ideas are as bad as you imply, then you should be able to show that by just repeating them. You shouldn't have to make things up. But he says, quote, Critics on YouTube and Twitter said it about Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. They said it about Disney Plus's She-Hulk Attorney at Law, and they said it about Obi-Wan Kenobi. And these are just the most recent three. It was said that they had been infected by woke agendas, had no respect for their respective source material, and that fans would eventually realize. And they were right. I haven't watched She-Hulk, but I did watch the other two, and yes, both shows were a disaster. We can stick to one point, respecting the source material. In Star Wars, Vader says that when he last met Kenobi, he was but the learner, now he's the master. In Kenobi, clearly Anakin is no longer a Padawan, so the line now makes no sense. But it gets worse. The new show has them meet and fight twice, with both allowing the other to live. Now it appears that Obi had the chance to stop Vader, but let him live, placing the burden of Vader's demise on Luke. There was already a problem with Obi and Yoda using Luke to do their dirty work without telling the boy that Vader was his father. Now you have Obi forcing Luke to do what he could have done 10 years before, with minimal effort. It doesn't just make Obi look manipulative, it makes him look cruel. I've made tons of videos about the lore problems with the Rings of Power, but here's a simple one. The show now implies that the Elven Rings were created first, and with Sauron's help. Two things that contradict what Tolkien wrote. The Three Rings were the last to be created before the One, and Sauron had nothing to do with them. He didn't forge them, suggest them, or know much about them. Everything I just said has been noticed by normies and criticized for its stupidity. So when Mark says, quote, Happily, all three shows have proven to be huge hits, extremely popular with audiences and critics alike. Everyone knows he's just politicking. Mark says that Amazon boasted about their 100 million views, but if you go to the Rings of Power page and read the reviews, even the most popular reviews are middling. You'll also find numerous comments stating that this is their third or fourth attempt at leaving a comment because Amazon deleted their previous ones. These were all critical reviews, and most of them aren't short. I'm not going to claim that the shows don't have large viewing numbers because that would be a lie. However, just because something gets watched doesn't mean it gets enjoyed, and citing movie-slash-TV critics, who often admit to a political bias in favor of so-called diverse shows and films, doesn't help your argument. Neither does dismissing critical reviews as review bombing, which Mark does. Then he goes on to say that the whole who is Sauron thing became a water cooler conversation. That's interesting because the Guardian's Stuart Heritage, awesome name, just wrote an article saying, quote, Friday's final episode promised to answer the question at the heart of the first season. Who is Sauron? Throughout the last few weeks, the show has been tying itself into all kinds of knots to get us to care about this, wheeling out a truckload of mustache-twirling figures with Sauron potential. Was it the evil orc everyone called Father? The man who fell from the sky? Was it the evil women who looked like Kirtan from this country? Or was it the man who spent the entire season hanging out with Galadriel and was obviously Sauron all along? He's not alone in that observation. Even the showrunners, idiots that they be, admitted that they weren't trying to fool anyone. It was just a plot device to keep people interested, and it failed, at least on the people with functioning brains. He goes on to cite the She-Hulk finale, claiming it was lauded by audiences, which is again disproven by the general fan response. From Giant Freaking Robot, quote, It also didn't help that the show's season finale was very divisive. In a recent interview with Entertainment Weekly, Maslany revealed that there were around 20 different versions of the ending at one point. For those who watched the series finale of She-Hulk, then you know how it breaks the fourth wall and completely scraps what looked to be a big action brawl at the end. That's from their article about whether the super successful most beloved show ever has been cancelled. When the show's lead actress is saying Kevin Feige was very dismissive of doing the second season, you know there's a problem, and it ain't YouTubers. Mark attacks Ryan Kennel and Gary from Nerdrotic for daring to critique the shows. I think the better reason to attack them is for them watching two shitty shows at the same time. 
Who does this to themselves? Space that shit out like a normal person. Mark also says this, quote, You'd think those franchise fans that predicted Doom would be delighted. Their favorite properties have new iterations that have been popular and well-received. Well, that's a stupid argument. Imagine you go into Longhorn's Steakhouse and find that instead of steaks, they just have vegetables and beyond meat. And they go, well, it says steakhouse on the building. You like steakhouses? What's the difference? They don't have steaks. That's the difference. I'm here for dead cow, not cold-pressed diarrhea. You don't get to slap a name on something and expect fans of the real thing to just buy it anyway. That's not how this works, and it's not how it should work. If I go to see a cover band for, I don't know, Dokken, I expect them to sound like Dokken. I don't expect them to change the lyrics, change the music, change the instruments, or for them to be butthurt when they get called out for it. I didn't come here to listen to your avant-garde, experimental, post-EDM, emo-wave, trans-feminist deconstruction of hegemonic, heteronormative, auditory, patriarchal orthodoxy. I want to hear you cover Dokken. Do that or go home. Unfortunately, it seems like these shows were created and promoted with the intent of pissing off the very audience that would watch them. This isn't Rage Against the Machine telling right-wingers what they would have known if they actually listened to Rage's lyrics, that the band ain't right-wing in the slightest. This is Gibson telling guitarists, buy authentic, you cheap, penny-pitching bastards, which they did a few years ago. You know how well that went for Gibson? Well, if you listen carefully, you can still hear the echoes of the fuck yous. It's fair to criticize shows and films, and it's fair to point out when the media has a narrative and seems to ignore anything that doesn't fit that narrative, or, like Mark does, misrepresent the other side. He says about the critiques, quote, It's an example of what I call agenda trolling, when a commenter's personal view is so firmly set that no evidence is going to shake them from it. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the biggest hypocrite of them all? He goes on to compare critics of these shows to conspiracy theorists and science deniers, saying, quote, when presented with irrefutable evidence, they would simply ignore it and continue with their now disproven point. These people are so determined to hate something, so frustrated by the very existence of a point of view they disagree with, they will start to ignore reality itself. I watched the shows, Mark. I gave my opinion on what I saw and defended that opinion, something you haven't done this whole article. You dismiss negative critiques from viewers, claiming it was review bombing, and you've written off people like me who do long-form in-depth reviews for the shows. I agree that you can't argue with an agenda troll because, as you're proving, they already have a narrative, and they will stick to it no matter what. But I don't think that's your problem. I think your problem is that you're mad that people don't like the shows, and now you're lashing out at them, like Marvel itself did with She-Hulk. As Mark says, quote, The final episode of She-Hulk's first season, in which the eponymous character is attacked by a group of male superhero enthusiasts who hate her for just existing, is a gloriously funny, extremely knowing, and laser-targeted dig at exactly those fans who can't see past their idealized version of what their favorite show should be. It's not gone down over well with the YouTubers and Redditors. Small wonder. Critics possessing such a limited and inflexible imagination, with such a weirdly deliberate lack of empathy for the enjoyment of their fellow fans, were never going to be bright enough to get the joke. Who could have predicted that making fans the butt of your jokes wasn't going to win them over? Doing that tells us everything we need to know about the intent behind these shows. They hate the fans. This goes beyond politics. You're not just attacking right-wingers. You're going after anyone who likes the character for just liking the character. It'd be like Nike getting mad at people for liking their shoes. That makes absolutely no sense. It makes even less sense to change the shoes people are buying. You're not making them better. You're making a completely new shoe with the old name on it, specifically despite the people who like the old shoes, and then getting mad when they don't like it. And do you know what that results in? Your super successful She-Hulk might get canceled. The Rings of Power has a two-year break, but Amazon is probably annoyed with how poorly the show went over after spending a billion dollars to make and market it. Kenobi is also in limbo. All the praise from the media doesn't change this. You can go after the fans all you want. Every negative review can't be fake. These shows have a mixed response, whether you like it or not, and trashing the people who are most likely to hype the show if it's good isn't the best strategy. If it were, She-Hulk wouldn't need to go through 20 different endings. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.